Oh, just some scary movie. You like scary movies? Uh huh. What's your favorite scary movie? Hello and welcome to All Things Horror. I am your host Ben and I'm joined here with my co-host Matt. If you're new to the show, each week we choose a movie to break down and review. We give it our honest opinions and rate it from 1 to 10. We have a brief spoiler-free chat about the movie before we head into the plot and discuss our favourite and least favourite parts of the film. And if you stick around until the end, we'll finish off with some interesting trivia and a fun little game created by myself. And... uh, I know we're a bit late, but we are still <laughs> continuing our journey through sequel September. Um, and yeah, so we we carry on our nightmare fuel with uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's mm. Revenge from 1985. Yeah. yeah. The one that Wes Craven literally was like, I don't like it. Yep, he wanted nothing um, to do it. But now people are saying they do like it after like, you know decades yeah it's now it's it's now getting lots of love um which is sounds similar to what we were saying about friday the 13th yeah part, yeah, yeah. part two as well so yeah i mean um, we started getting into it a little bit at the end of that episode the friday the 13th episode because this is probably the one that i'm least familiar with in the franchise mm. and that's probably because i tend to may uh, skip past this one just because it's so different plot wise from the first one um, yeah, you've got a final boy, but it's yeah. it's really, really gay coded. Now that's the big thing, isn't it? That's mm. the big question. Like the the writers like, oh, that's totally anything you read into it, it's totally accidental. And yeah, then like yeah. everybody else who's ever watched it is like, it's really homoerotic. Yeah. I think that actually makes it more interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. L- less like the documentary um that he that that um mark Patton did i know i've mentioned it a couple of times on the podcast how much i enjoyed it um and obviously mark Patton brings himself to that role so it's a really interesting um it's a really interesting take you know there's little moments in mm. this where it's like really like gay coded <laughs> and not even coded, just like right there. <laughs> yeah, um, well, that's the thing. Because I mean, I, I probably watched this quite young, and I haven't really seen it a whole bunch of times. Yeah. Like probably twice. I don't know. But it never actually jumped out to me. I was probably too like young and naive to actually yeah, pick up on it. Yeah. But like watching it back, knowing that it is very obvious <laughs> when you watch yeah. it back in the mindset of it is a homoerotic film. It does stand out an awful lot. Like everything, yeah. like everything, <laughs> everything. that happens, <laughs> everything. <laughs> Some of it is just like, um, like everything is very, yeah, like you say, very obvious. And <laughs> but it's not obvious when you're like a kid and no. you not, you don't think about like anything like that really. Anything about sexuality, you know, you shouldn't yeah. be doing because you know, you're learning about yourself and, <laughs> um, like you know, like when you're like eight or something, you you just kind of want to, you know, you're yeah. just more interested in watching a scary movie. Um, yeah. But as an adult, I think it's, you know, unmistakably gay. <laughs> um, and I think that's what's really interesting is that discussion between the director, Jack Shoulder, Chaskin, the writer, um, Mark Patton, what he brings to it. You've almost got three completely different opinions on what the film is. Mm. And they're the three most important people in making the film. And the fourth one, Wes Craven's just like, yeah, it wasn't for me. Like, no. it's not, like, it's just not my kind of thing. Um, and like, even the director's like, oh, he didn't, he wasn't even self aware enough to notice 
that he thought that, that he was gay. Now I find mm. that a bit hard. Yeah, I find that hard to, to believe. believe. Like even the like the dancing scene on its own. <laughs> but like, <laughs> but like, isn't there? A, there's a moment, isn't there, where like he's in a gay club, like a yeah. gay bar, in, in so it's like, um, and and like they they cast Mark Patton. He's not like sort of tough guy leading man even though i think he was closeted at the time but mm. he's his mannerisms are very are very like you know mm. uh gay so cuz he is but um <laughs> yeah. and that's and that's totally fine but like then to say you didn't notice any of those things is fine if you were like 8 yeah but yeah not if you're the director of the film and i don't know why the director of the film would either deny it or or the writer, you know, why they would have these kind of arguments and discussions because it, it doesn't, like, take anything away from the film, but also maybe at the time you couldn't say that mm. it was like that because it would stop people watching it because people were, like, um, more overtly homophobic. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, that, that you know, like now you you know you could make a film and say this is kind of a you know like the characters are gay and be like or, or, or struggling with their sexuality or whatever and that could yeah. be part of the story and that's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it just doesn't. It was fine then, but it's just nobody would have watched. Like it wouldn't have. Not nobody would have watched it. They wouldn't have allowed anyone to watch it if that's what they said it was. It wouldn't have got made if, no. if that's what they said it was. Yeah. It's like, weird. It's just it's just a weird p- period of time. And Mark Mark Patton, like he actually like refers to himself as the first male scream queen now, which yeah. is <laughs> pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, and even though he's like quite ill and 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 struggling, um, he goes to he didn't realize how much he was loved and like embraced. So there now he goes and does like a bit like the room, like he'll act out scenes with people on stage, go to screenings. Hmm. Um, he he's he's a yeah he's he's like embracing it now, and I think he kind of ran away from it at the time. Apparently, it was down to him and Brad Pitt. Oh um, really? Oh, right. Which is really interesting. <laughs> so I, I I I he's got like a kind of smaller Brad Pitt look to yeah, him yeah. to to a certain degree, but yeah, I I I think it's nice for him now. Now he's older to realize that people do like this film I, I i liked it a lot more than i thought i did from watching it in the past and maybe second one sometimes you do skip through it it's weird because like i love the third one my third is my favorite mm. and as you know my favorite friday the 13th is the fourth one my favorite halloween is the third one it's never mm. the second but then when we did second friday the 13th i was like Oh, actually, this is really good, and the same goes with this. It's like, yeah, a bit of a surprise. Did you did you find it as a this time any different? Like, I'm not say say whether you you know what score you want to give it or anything, but yeah. did you find that this was a surprise to you? Yeah, I mean, I was going to ask you the same thing because uh, obviously we'll keep our um, uh, ratings till later, and without going into any spoilers, I'm sure I'll be pointing some stuff out through the way. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I hadn't seen this a whole bunch of times. I'd forgotten a lot of it, but I think I did have a, a, a better viewing this time around. Um, yeah, I don't know why it is, why I skipped through this one. Maybe it is, uh, I don't I don't even know. Maybe it's just the Craven feel, because I did not get a Wes Craven feel from this one. The first one and the third no. one is very Craven heavy, like... The, uh, I don't think in this one you really had that score behind it. Um, you know, you know the one I'm thinking, uh, saying like, dun 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 dun. dun. Mm. I don't think that this one had it. And uh, no, I know the fir- first and third were really heavy with that. And uh, I, you'll be happy to know I uh, I did my homework. You gave me my you assigned me my homework last time. <laughs> Which was to watch uh, Never Never Sleep Again documentary, yeah. And uh, I think watching that, I did have a better viewing of this one, um, maybe because everything going into it. Uh, but I, I I believe it was on there where there was some times where Robert England wasn't fully immersed into the role, like he had his own opinions where he thought some yeah. scenes weren't 
necessarily yeah, needed. He's and not. I, I he's did not, uh, that. Yeah. That did drip through to me as I was watching it. Watching it, like I was like, this Freddy doesn't seem like the other Freddies. If that makes sense, he's not sense. like the star of the show in the same mm. way. He's like more of a, a distant threat. Whereas, like, as we go into, like, three and four, he's, like, all singing, all dancing, literally. Yeah, yeah. Big, big character, more more like the Freddy show. Yeah. Whereas in this one, you're right. And I, this reminds me a little bit of, like, other... It reminds me of, like, Slumber Party Massacre or something like that, in a way. Mm, mm. Um, because the, the lead guy isn't so much... Um, it, it's more, like, following him than um than it is yeah than, than, it, than it is freddy like freddy's not like there's bits where freddy arrives like at the the, the the pool party and stuff where it's really cool with the mm. fire in the water and all that kind of stuff yeah yeah um but like you say it's not it's not full of freddy moments is it like you can think of freddy moments from three even yeah. four and maybe they went a bit too far with it with four and five mm. But... Yeah, it's uh, it's quite it's quite odd. Like, if you think about just the first three films, it's quite interesting how unique and different they all are from each other. Like, the first yeah. one is a more slasher type um, nightmare film. This one is more of a possession type Freddy film, and the mm. third one is it's almost like almost completely just fantasy. Like, it's a, it's a fantasy horror. Yeah, yeah, and the third one's know. like um, feels more Hollywood as well. Like yeah, a... yeah, and I don't know if that's because all three had different directors. Like Wes Craven was solely the first one. Um, what's his face? Shoulder? What's his, what's the? Oh, director? Jack Shoulder. Jack yeah. Shoulder was this one. I'm not sure who directed the first one. I know Craven was involved with it, but I don't think he directed mm. that one. Yeah, because I mean, as we get towards like sort of, um, and is it Rennie Harlan does the 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 fourth one i think right um off the top of my head i can't remember who did the um <laughs> who did the third one obviously because that's the one we talked we were just talking about but um it it it's it is it is a bit of an outlier when you watch them all but they're all very like different like yeah. the, the, once we get into this kind of idea of this baby thing um it's a bit like in halloween where they start going down the jamie lloyd and this weird cult thing it's like they're adding a new thing into it that fans of the originals or original film or even the third film in this guy like dream warriors they kind of add all these things into it and you're like oh um the fans are not really that's not what they wanted like they yeah. they don't want you to deviate too much from it but everyone's got to put their own so it's chuck russell who did the third one who um who, who did the remake of the Blob, I believe, and um, also the Scorpion King. So nothing like amazing that you would remember him for. But then it, then it goes to kind of Rennie Harlan and more towards weird and wonderful stuff like putting people on pizzas or having celebrities in it, and you know it becomes a bit more of a cultural thing. Mm. And I think the the strange thing is like this one. If, if we're to believe what everyone's saying, it's just the kind of perfect storm of an actor who's struggling with his sexuality bringing that to a role, a possession role, like you said. Mm. So, like, struggling with possession and struggling with sexuality, there's kind of like a crossover. He's kind of tapping into his own emotions and, like, actually acting. Yeah. Um, the director isn't aware that that's what is happening. This is what we're to believe. <laughs> and the writer is kind of written this story that he thinks is a certain thing and then it's being interpreted in a different way so this one is like almost completely different to any of the others you can kind of group four and five together some of the later ones more meta together the first one you can just say well that's always craven pretty much mm. um but i don't think this is the worst in the series by any by okay. any stretch. I don't know if people were were people saying that? Were people like just saying this is the worst one ever? I don't know. Um what's the what's the rating saying? IMDB are giving this a four point five out of ten. 
Rotten Tomatoes mm. are 43. So, yeah, straight straight down the middle, near enough. Yeah, yeah. a bit like the second um, Friday the 13th, where it's, like, not hated but not loved. Yeah. Um, it's weird because, like, the, the cast is good. Like, Kim Myers, I thought, I thought she was, when I first watched it, I thought that was Meryl Streep. She looks just like yeah. Meryl Streep, yeah, like a does. young Meryl Streep. Um, mm-hmm. And I've not seen her do much else. And I was like, oh, she's really good. Um, and then mm. I'm also trying not to bring too much to it from re- watching documentaries, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like you can read more into it once you, they tell you all the information about it that you didn't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I don't know about, and, and like that there's some good moments in it, but this like subtext of like repressed sexuality and which is essentially the possession part is it might well be the more I think about it, it might well be um accident but then meeting your gym teacher in a fetish club isn't really an accident either so <laughs> i mean we're at the we're at peak kind of like um films like death wish and death wish 3 and masculinity and stuff you know almost like big muscles and rocky and rambo and all that kind of mm. stuff so i i can't imagine that they would like like i said before without repeating myself it's got to be really hard for them to be like oh um you know, this is about you know, the subtext here about repressed sexuality and stuff like that. They, they want to keep that quiet because they'd be, you know, it also, also, I guess to protect him if he's, if he's not out at this point, hmm. but the idea of people, um, uh, you know, the writer and the director kind of, one of them definitely is on, is in on that. <laughs> yeah. I'll... Just bef- before we uh, go into the plot, like one one quick thing. Do you think what? Well, two two questions. One, what do you make of Jack Shoulder? Like uh, personally, I've never heard of him as a director. And two, do you think he was the right fit for this film? Because following mm-hmm. following Wes Craven, who's already done Last House on the Left, The Hills Have Eyes, and obviously A Nightmare on Elm Street. To me, that would be like a huge sense of pressure. Like, and the original was so like it was received so well, much like his other films. Like, he in 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 the um, Never Sleep Again documentary, he even openly admits that he had he didn't like the original, and it seems like he had absolutely no problem messing around with the foundations that were already set down, like the Freddy Lure him his background everything everything that's that we already knew it's almost yeah. like this film is just kind of disregarded some stuff and it's like messed with the like who he is yeah i think he's wanting what he's wanting to do is make like a classy rosemary's baby exorcist um classic horror film and mm. that doesn't involve having like a really over the top um bad guy or mm. main monster or whatever it's like those are the character like a bit like jaws or whatever you, you know you, you, it's the idea of them that's more scary than the um than the actual thing and that's kind of what he's made so yeah maybe he was the wrong person but then maybe in the way the right person because if you just if they try to make the first one exactly the same again but with somebody else instead of Wes Craven, I think then it would be the worst one they've, of the series, um, mm. or certainly one of the worst ones in the series. So uh, it's it's a tr- it's tricky, isn't it? You've got to let people go and do their own thing. It does make ask the question: Why was he chosen? If if his idea, I know he did um, his own film called, um, Alone Alone in the Dark um, with mm. Donald Pleasance and a few other people, and like he got a background making but i think he just wanted to make a standalone horror film yeah yeah would just don't so happen that everybody who watches it wants freddy Krueger. yeah like and, and lots of him and loads of creative freddy freddy lines classic lines and classic kills and funny weird special effects but jack shoulder doesn't really want that no um and the writers going into this deep you know, idea of because um, they turned down the idea of the baby thing that the, that they ended up using later on, didn't they, to make this? So the dream child and all that kind of stuff, mm. and dream master and all that was 
could have happened for the second one. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's just it's weird to think about it. I mean, like now, the reason that they, a lot of people say this is a little bit confused is that the writers like, well, we didn't want to say too much because homophobia was skyrocketing and our core audience was adolescent boys. Mm. So we didn't lean too far into what the film was, but we it was all kind of trickling into the psyche, you know, like we wanted to kind of put this in. And, and But then earlier on, he'll say something completely different. So I don't really know. I think it feels a little bit of a confused film, but it's not boring and it's different, but it's not Freddy's film, is it? No, 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 it's not. Okay, right. Let's head into the plot. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that spoiler warning. So if you haven't seen the film, now's the time to duck out. Spoiler warning. <laughs> right, so this movie kicks off five years after the first one. A new family have moved into Nancy's house. Uh, Jesse has a nightmare about Freddy Krueger. He and his friend Lisa find Nancy's diary in his bedroom, uh, detailing her nightmares, uh, which are strikingly familiar to his ones. Uh, a small fire happens around the house, um, culminate, uh, culminating in a spontaneous combustion of their pet bird. <laughs> and oh dear. more Je animal trauma. <laughs> yeah, and Jesse <laughs> has another nightmare where Freddy, um, where Freddy tells Jesse to kill for him. Yeah, I um, <laughs> I, w I watched this film with my wife, and she lit literally got so angry at that scene. But um, the scene after the bird scene, because the next oh. day, um, the toaster suddenly sets on fire, and the dad shouts out. He goes, "That's the most bizarre thing I've ever seen!" <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> but literally, his pet bird just burst into flames the night before. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> the but, toaster. But yeah. The toaster is the <laughs> strangest thing he's ever seen. It didn't upset me too much about the bird. Not that I don't like all animals, but like. I feel like I'd be a hypocrite to be really upset about because, like, I eat chicken, you know, like, yeah. chicken's a bird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, it didn't upset me as much as, like, you say, if the family cat or dog blew up, um, <laughs> which would have been really weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, I know. It, is, it, does, it, it feels a bit like a John Waters kind of camp um, reimagining of what the nuclear family is like yeah, like yeah. like an like a um, like a stage play yeah where everyone's pretending to be a nuclear american g whiz pop family yeah even the way it's lit it's different like nancy's family in the first film is more normal i mean mum's a bit weird but like <laughs> the 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 house and the setup and, and dad's a bit weird but like the, <laughs> the, 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 the it feels more grounded in reality, if that makes sense. Whereas this feels like a bit of a stage play. It does. Yeah, I weren't a fan of the dad. I thought he was a bit too much. And there was another thing he said as well, where he starts, um, he starts blaming his wife for buying cheap bird seed. I was like, yeah, yeah that's why your bird blew up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> may cause explosions. <laughs> yeah, I must, I must remember not to buy that. <laughs> yeah, it's um. As as we go through as well, like Jesse and Lisa come across as like best friends rather than love interests, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to figure those two out. <laughs> mm -hmm. She's good though. She's a good actress. Oh yeah, she is. They both are. Yeah, they're both they're good. Yeah. They're both good. Yeah. But um <laughs> I think my main problem is like the whole concept of the first film was about Freddy taking revenge on the kids of the parents yeah. who killed him but but Jesse isn't Elm Street kid like he's he's new he he's new to the neighborhood he's got nothing to do with him at all so mm. i don't really understand that side of it like why so why the is... house is haunted is it a haunted house film yeah i don't know yeah it feels like again he's trying to make this into like um almost like poltergeist or mm. um or, or Exorcist, or Rosemary's Baby, or something. Yeah, yeah. Where it's enclosed, like this, you know, it's a completely standalone thing. It's got nothing to do with what, 
like Freddy's backstory. Mm. It, it just so happens that this kid moves into this room and he finds Nancy's diary. Yeah, yeah. And that's and the like, only oh, real me thing. Me too. That's the Why? only thing you really get from Nancy as well. I would have liked a bit more from her. I know we get her in the third one, which is great. But Yeah, she's great in that. Yeah, yeah. They, other than Nancy's diary, they don't really talk much about the first one. The first no, film. no. And like these little fires around the house is a bit pathetic. The, mm. Like it's quite funny, the pet bird thing. Um, it's all shot really well. It doesn't look like a bad film, but it just reminds me a little bit of like a more campy film, like a, like a more like Slumber Party Massacre or John Waters or yeah. something like that, like um, Serial Mom or... Um, you know, like in One Division, where they're inside a TV show, or Pleasantville, or something <laughs> like that. It, mm. You know, it feels a bit like that. Yeah, where you're yeah. you're inside a TV show, and like it would be cool to have played it that way. If like of or like Society, where like he's the one character who's like, this is all weird. Like everything's weird, except me. Like I know what's going on, but everybody else is behaving really strangely. That'd be really cool. Mm. If it was all of say Freddy's design, the whole thing was as Freddy's design, and the only person who was didn't wasn't kind of enchanted by the whole thing. Maybe it's all a dream. The whole thing's a dream. The only person who recognizes it's a dream is Jesse. Mm. That, that would have, that would have been cool. Yeah. 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 That would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not what we got. <laughs> but that's not what we got. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the dreams grow more intense and he unsuccessfully attempts uh, different measures to wait, uh, to keep himself awake. He wanders the streets one night and comes across his gym coach in a gay bar. And his coach makes him run laps at school as a punishment. Then in the gym showers, Freddy emerges, killing him for Jesse, then horrified to see the glove is actually on his hand. Uh, the following night, Jesse attends Lisa's pool party and kisses her, but his body begins to change and he leaves in a panic. So he goes to his friend Grady's house and tells Grady to watch him as he sleeps. But obviously Grady falls asleep. Then Freddy emerges from Jesse's body and kills him. That was good. I, li I liked that scene at Grady's house. I thought that was really good. As far as practical effects go, like for the most part, that we do get some quite bad made practical effects i'm thinking more like those dodgy looking dogs at the end but <laughs> but as far as freddy like he i think the makeup department did actually a great job on him considering that they didn't really have much reference to go by and that's quite hard to do mm. like for people like jason michael and leatherface you know they're all wearing masks so it's quite easy to pull off but with Freddy, like, it's just patches of latex and you, it can only really be done on Robert England because it actually, you know, you can tell it's Robert England. <laughs> so the yeah. fact that they could, like, pull that off, because I think that was another thing in the documentary where they literally just had a couple of pictures just to go by his what placement for what burns, you know, going by the first film, which didn't actually give you an awful lot to go by. Yeah, I hadn't really thought about that. Yeah, I suppose it's not like at this point where there's like a Freddy, like, um, continuity or loads, like you say, loads of stuff. They could c still kind of go a slightly different way with it if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Kills, I think the uh, the Grady one definitely is the best one. Like, he comes mm. out. Uh, no, it's not. Uh... No, not Grady. He comes out of Jesse, doesn't he, and then kills Grady. But that yeah. that was pretty cool. The way he like kind of steps out of his body. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Again, it's like um, well, we, we could definitely read loads of stuff into all this kind of thing. Like you know, being tra trapped in like having stuff trapped inside. Like the whole film's about things being trapped inside you. Yeah. Like whether it's feelings, emotions horrific characters <laughs> yeah um dreams um yeah <laughs> so in a way i think they're trying to do something quite clever but 
maybe yeah. n- not letting anybody in on what it is they're trying to do. <laughs> yeah. Because, y- y- yeah, the director's not quite sure what he wants, but he wants it to be good. Like, classy. His idea the is ra- there, but it's not yeah. really shining through the way I think he visioned it to. No, he should have just wrote it himself if he wanted it a certain way. If he wanted it to be like a Rosemary's Baby or something like that, he shouldn't have just... But I don't think that's how they do things. I think they commission a script and then they find a director. That seems to be the thing they do. Right. I feel like Robert Shea is the kind of guy mm. and who, who's like, this is the direction we're going in. A bit like, is it Sean Cunningham with Friday the 13th? It's like, yeah, you've got this kind of... Or George Lucas or someone. You know, you've got this kind of person who's going steering it in a certain way and strangely it never whatever whoever it is it never quite seems to work work out <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that they have a cohesive understanding of what they're going to do from film to film to film doesn't matter what's what series it is yeah that we watch they're all a bit all over the place yeah <laughs> and that sometimes is great that's great though isn't it because it means we can get like a, a jason x or a you know and, and then we can also have like the, you know, the ones that are very, very different, like the second one, mm, yeah. you know. So, I, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's interesting. I suppose that's what keeps people coming back, isn't it? The fact that there's something for everyone. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, it's not if every film was exactly the same, then we'd be whinging about that, wouldn't we? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so Freddy then changes back to Jesse and then he flees back to Lisa's house. Lisa realizes that Jesse's terror is giving Freddy his strength and then transforms again where Freddy attacks Lisa, but he can't harm her due to Jesse's influence. So he goes outside instead where he slaughters the party goers before escaping Lisa confronts Freddy where he pleads with Jesse to fight back and confesses her love for him and uh, he uh, she uh, kisses Freddy. After this, Jesse begins to fight back, making Freddy explode into ash. Later, as Jesse, Lisa and Lisa's friend Kerry are on the school bus, um, just like the original Nightmare at the beginning of the film, uh... He starts panicking and Jesse's claw um, bursts through Kerry's chest and Freddy laughs as the bus drives into the field. Closing credits. Yeah, forgot to talk about the intro. What did you make of the in- Well, intro and outro. The, um, um, the bus. Yeah, bus ride. no, they're good. Uh, mm. Like I said, there's nothing I hate about this film. Why? Um, um, mm. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that might be why it's straight down the middle with everyone's ratings. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm the same. Um, well, well, let's, let's go. Yeah, let's go into our ratings now. So, where where would you place this then? On on one to ten, what would your scale be? Where would you put it? I think. Oh man, I, I haven't decided yet. This is the problem. I, I was like, I, I thought it would just come to me while we were doing the thing because I looked on my letterbox from when I watched it and um, when I watched it last, like before this time, and um, it, it it was the uh, the two the, the the two times I've rated it on um, on letterbox, I've given it different scores. Uh, <laughs> so um I, i'm i'm gonna go again it i don't want to cop, cop out because i do like it um and i think i uh, oh it's tough i i think i'm gonna give it six and a half Ooh. Mm. Okay. i'm gonna give it six and a half on retrospective viewing, it might have been like a six when I first watched it, but I'm going to give it a six and a half. <laughs> yeah, just to be a pain in the ass. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, that is basically what I've got as well. I, I've oh. had I've had this one down as a six because I'm not a huge fan of this film, but I enjoy it. On, on the basis that 
I love the franchise and this is a part of the franchise. Therefore, you know, it, I like it as an inclus inclusion of the franchise, if that makes sense. Like, I don't hate it. I just think it's good. Um, there's a lot of things I feel they missed the mark on, like the whole lure and concept of the original one that Craven created. It, it just, it was totally kind of like disregarded and a lot of stuff was put to the side. Like, um, it seemed a little bit silly at times. Uh, no fault from the actors. Um, I think they did a great job and they did the best with what they were working with. Um, but like I said earlier, even Robert England at certain points fell a little bit flat and I think that's because a lot of stuff he didn't actually agree on. So I can imagine it can be hard to pull off a scene if your heart isn't actually fully in it. Um, yeah. Yeah, maybe he wasn't like included in the process mm. as much as he would have liked to have been. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, I get that impression. Like yeah. he likes to be the like um the 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 curator of how Freddy comes across. Like he he takes a lot of pride in how that character is mm. shown and if he doesn't like it, mm -hmm. he gets like really upset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, with that I'll just uh, slightly above average. Uh, six out of ten. So yeah, I'm pretty much there with the the uh, the critics. Six out of mm. ten from me. And uh, yeah, I've I've got as well just just for reference, part one I gave it a nine out of ten. Oh okay. Um, the first film, uh, the the yeah. first one, the original, I gave it a nine out of ten, and you gave it an eight out of ten. So yeah, mm. this one this time around, the second one, six out of ten, and you six point five out of ten. Yeah, I mean, I'm usually a fan of like Clue Gulliger, who plays like Ken mm. uh, Walsh, who plays like Jesse's um, dad, and oh, okay, even he, like he's usually really good in stuff, but um, I don't know, there's just I'm, I, I, I can't criticize anybody in particular. No, that's the thing. So I guess that's why it makes it so down the middle. Yeah. I think if it was just like, say, Jack Shoulders film, or it was um, just um, the, the the writer um, whose name escapes me again. I've, I've literally said it about 10 times and I've totally <laughs> forgotten his name again. Um, but the if it was just one person's vision then it might have been a really really cool film but it, it does yeah. come across a bit like one of freddy's nightmares tv shows in a way mm -hmm. um yeah. but like obviously mark Patton has so much like he obviously he's a good actor and he's like put a lot of thought into it like he's even written a book as jesse i found out oh really yeah so like he he was obviously and he was a stage actor before he did this and obviously they do all their prep and they, you know, they do lots of rehearsals for the stage. And I think he was still in that mode where he was just absolutely immersed by that character and just part of him came out in it, making it <laughs> just slightly different than what maybe other people had intended for it. And then, like we said, the right, it's like, I don't want to go over the same stuff again, but it's not, quite realized it's just a shame that they couldn't all just talk to each other openly and come together and like have uh mark Patton and um robert shea and jack shoulder and uh chaskin who wrote it and um robert england and have mm. them all work on it together yeah but maybe maybe like egos and you know i'm in charge kind of thing got in the way of it yeah and that's why I think the third one kind of like brings it back more tighter yeah. because I yeah. think, I, I, I mean, I don't know because I, I haven't, you know, I, I need to carry on because I only watched the uh, the documentary just for this second one. So I need to carry on for the third one. So I don't know how involved um, Robert England and, um, you know, every, everyone was. I know it was a different director, but Craven came back for the, I don't know if he was writing it or he produced it or, or something i don't know but i know he was a lot more involved and I, can, I would imagine the more the franchise went on the more robert england would um have more say in what happens or or at yeah, least or at least yeah. for how freddie would react to certain things 
Yeah, I agree. And I think as well, um, he seemed like he was having more fun in the third one. But he had more mm. to do, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But um, he, he seemed like he was really enjoying himself. And like, I think you make a good point when you said it, it kind of felt like he wasn't in this one. Yeah. Um, mm. So, yeah, there's there's lots of good things about it. In a way, it's a bit... It's just a bit of an outlier from the other films, which may make it stand out at the time. But I don't think that makes it a bad film. No, it's just it just doesn't feel like the same as the others. So yeah, there's um, <laughs> it. I I actually think now it's quite nice that people are coming to this film and reevaluating it and enjoying it. And I think watching it alongside that um, Scream Queen, My Nightmare on Elm Street documentary is a good evening to watch both of them back to back hmm. you get more out of it mm. yeah 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 i need to so, watch that one as well yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i think it's on it's, i think it's free on quite a lot of stuff i, I definitely i think i saw it on tubi um so yeah it's it's a weird like it's got a weird story to it hasn't it that the, the film's almost more interesting behind the scenes than it is the film itself <laughs> yeah that's what i thought yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay all right let's uh let's jump into some trivia trivia oh yeah okay what we got so new line cinema originally didn't ask robert england to return as freddy krueger and refused to give him a pay rise a stuntman was cast as Freddy at the start of the production, and after two weeks of filming, Robert Shea realised that this was a terrible lapse in judgment, fired the stuntman and hired England and met all of his demands. As they should, because Robert England is the king of nightmares. Yeah, you'd, be, you'd <laughs> struggle, wouldn't you, to like make this without him? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he is Freddy. That is, and he, he, is he probably knows his value as well. Like yeah. he's not like, oh yeah, no, no, it's fine. Just, I mean, look at when they did um, the the remake. It just felt oh, weird. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think all of that that wasn't so much Robert England. It was his um, agent that they were fighting for a good deal and felt he he deserved more, and rightfully so he did because he absolutely smashed it in the first one. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Uh, next up, the original glove from An Armour on Elm Street was used in this movie and was also seen hanging on the wall of the work shed in Evil Dead 2. This, really? Yeah. This was in response to the use of the Evil Dead on a TV in An Armour on Elm Street. Hmm. And part of a continued banter between directors Wes Craven and Sam Raimi. However, when Rez Wes Craven loaned the glove to an Armour on Elm Street free Dream Warriors, it was lost, but eventually found in 2009 by a Freddy fan at an auction. Oof. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like a bit of movie history there. Then, <laughs> really, uh, yeah, I think that, really that, that, that glove has seen some things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah I actually noticed this um, Freddy's sweater is different in this from the, from the first film in the original uh, Freddy is wearing a red and green swipe dra uh, striped sweater but it's only stripy on the torso of the jumper uh, because the sleeves were plain red uh, but huh. this one, and I believe everything else going forward, it's fully stripy on both the torso and the sleeves. I've got a stripy one, just like that. Yeah. And um, I thought it was kind of cool. Like, I was like, oh, I'm a bit like Kurt Cobain or something. And <laughs> my wife's just like, you just look like Freddy Krueger, and you know what he's famous for being. <laughs> so I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> probably, don't need, probably don't when you stop wearing this. So I gave it to charity. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody else is walking around with it on now <laughs> <laughs> oh, and last up uh, I think we've already spoken about this but Mark Patton an openly gay actor has amusingly stated that he sees himself as the first male screen queen 
due to a combination of factors including the film's homoerotic subtext, the fact that he was often depicted on screen uh, on screen screaming like a girl and because he viewed the character as a closeted gay man. There we go. Yeah, I wonder how much he said this after the fact. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it might it might well have done. I'm not I'm not disputing it. It's just that everybody seems to be changing their story constantly. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Are you ready for this week's game? Always. Let me get Google. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> all right. Just like last episode's game for Friday the 13th Part 3, I'm going to quiz you on the franchise of A Nightmare on Elm Street. So let's see if you know more about Freddy than you do, Jason. <laughs> um, I probably know. My, you know, I'm, my, my brain has gone to mush. I don't remember anything, so let's see. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of the fictional town where Freddy Krueger haunts the dreams of its residents? It's not Haddonfield. I know that for certain. Um, it's not Sunnydale. Um, I can't even remember. I can't remember. <laughs> I don't know. I pass. I, no? I can't. Even, I can't remember what it's called. It is. Well, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boo. <laughs> can't forget that. <laughs> can't miss that. <laughs> Springwood. Oh, okay. Springwood, no. Nah. Springwood. I think it's supposed to be it... set in Ohio, so Springwood, Ohio. Okay, that that literally. Um, I don't think I've ever thought about. It. It's weird how Haddonfield has become like a character in yeah. the others. It's not really become a character in the Freddy ones. I don't think. <laughs> Crystal Lake. Crystal Lake has. Yeah. Uh, including remakes and spin-offs, how many movies is Freddy in? Oh, spin-offs. So we talk, we're not talking like Freddy's Nightmares TV show and stuff? Uh, not TV shows, no, just movies. Okay. Um, oh, crap. I always forget the remakes and modern ones. So Freddy vs. <laughs> Jason, I mustn't forget. Uh, 11? Ooh. <laughs> Too much. It was nine. Oh, balls. So oh, I, was, I was thought I'd go too low. <laughs> <laughs> there's six in the franchise. There's New Nightmare. There's Freddy vs. Jason and the remake. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So I, I definitely overestimated how many there was. <laughs> the, the upper end, I get confused because they're not numbered. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Um, Gotta keep it simple. <laughs> throughout all of the movies combined how many people has freddy killed and i'll give you a tolerance of 10 like 10 higher 10 lower how many people have he has he killed what in everything all together all movies combined together so nine nine movies oh jeez um okay so I'm going to get this wrong, obviously, but um, let's try and do a bit of maths. So let's say conservatively he kills four people. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm counting on my fingers, by the way. Uh, 34. Oh, you're well off. Oh. <laughs> Damn Apparently, it's 85. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am well off, you're correct. Well off, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have well. to do some fact-checking on that. Uh, I don't know. You're going to have to what find his, a video uh, that shows everyone. Yeah, what his biggest uh, kill movie is. Um, what is the name of the final girl in the third Nightmare movie, Dream Warriors? Your favourite one. What's the name of the final girl? In Dream Warriors? Yep. Oh, so it's... um. Are we talking like Patricia Arquette's character? Or are we still saying Nancy is the... Yeah, so Patricia Arquette's character. Oh, man, she's, she's, she's so beautiful. 
Um, <laughs> she's called Alabama in True Romance. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is where I first fell, fell in love with her. <laughs> um, and, and that, yeah. Um, and then they replace her, don't they? So I can't even remember from the other. Uh... Uh, no Googling. Uh, you know I'm Googling, don't you? <laughs> yeah. um, so... Five, four, uh, three, uh, two, um, oh, one. That... No, I give up. <laughs> What's she called? It's my favourite one as well. Kristen. Kristen Parker. <laughs> <sighs> right. Uh, Single. <laughs> okay, so sticking with Dream Warriors. In Dream Warriors, we meet Freddy Krueger's mother, a nun who was raped in an asylum by a hundred lunatics. What's her name? Mrs. Krueger? <laughs> um, I don't... Huh? Mama K. I don't know. Um, uh, Sarah. <laughs> Mary. Mary, Mary. No, it's Amanda Kruger. Amanda. Amanda. Amanda Hug and Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, how many movies into the franchise is The Dream Child? Four. Five. Four. Five. Five. <laughs> Five. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, God. You took That's, my first uh... answer, not my second. <laughs> That's good going. You you got them all wrong. That's wow. Uh, that that deserves <laughs> that deserves celebration trumpets on its own. Holy well, Jesus! Oh wait. What is that? That's not the one I meant to press. What the fuck is that? <laughs> it's a bit harsh. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I guess that one suits it. As that well. works too. I yeah. Guess. But yeah. I meant to do. <laughs> Woo! Zero out of six. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have got four marks once before. I remember it well. Twice. Twice. Oh, twice. right. Okay. Yeah. You keep a, you keep score. <laughs> I, um, I do know it's twice, but I think that might be the first time you've actually got them all wrong. So right yeah, on. wow, I'm getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I'm learning less. Oh dear. The more we do, the less I know. And <laughs> um, the thing about this is, it's like all like the third one's my favorite one. And you asked me lots of things about the third one. I still couldn't remember anything yeah. about it. <laughs> I've recently interviewed Ken Sagos and I interviewed, um, um, Leslie, um, Oh, what's it called? Leslie Hoffman, who was the hall guard in the first one. So I've done hmm. loads of research and read loads about Friday the 13th because they're all people that I've been like talking to. Um, <laughs> Luckily, they didn't give me a quiz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's my name in the film? <laughs> yeah. But, um, Kinky, uh -huh. yes. Um, yeah. She, she, she doesn't have a name really, Leslie Hoffman. She's just called, I think, Hall Guard or something like that. <laughs> She's the uh, one who's like wearing the red shirt and doing the, you know, in the first one. But, um, all right. Yeah. Well, for, uh, for, for next week, I'll, um, you uh well maybe you could do a bit of homework and you might okay. get some for next week because next week is gonna be a um Stephen King episode. So read every book that he's ever done. Every single book, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that um, do you want to have a guess which film? Is it mm -hmm. um Salem's Lot? It's not. But I'm in the middle of reading that. Well, not reading it. I don't read, but <laughs> uh, the audio book. I've I've not seen the film, and I know there's a new film coming out, and I want that experience of the book before the film. So I'm doing that. I've got the audio, but I'm halfway through, and I'm really enjoying it. But no, it's not Salem's Lot. But we will be doing that one soon. <laughs> ah, okay. Because uh, because I know there's lots of Nosferatu crossover with that, and I've never seen it, so ah, that's right, why I mentioned yeah. it. Right. So what what are we watching? Sorry, we are watching The Shining. Oh, The Shining. The Shining. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I got that on Blu-ray ages ago, and I never actually got around to watching it. I've seen it obviously loads of times, but not my Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. So yeah, looking forward to that. It's been a while. The Shining. Yeah, it's been a while. I, I think I watched Doctor Sleep before I last before I've watched. Yeah. Um, this I, I, I don't sleep was okay. Yeah. But, um, yeah. <laughs> That's another it's, film uh, uh, that I because I've only just started getting into audiobooks and 
I know my my wife is like a massive like Stephen King nerd when it comes to books, so she's read like all, <laughs> all the books. She's oh, you need to read the book. And I was like, yeah, but I don't. I lose interest in reading. Like I'll, I just end up reading the same page over and over again. It just doesn't stay in. But mm. whilst I'm I think working... my reading habits have changed. I think phones have made my reading habits change. I think when I was a kid, right. I used to just sit and go through hundreds of books. Now I just scroll. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, but yeah, I'll have a. Story. I've got that experience. I'm now going to be able to actually refer to the book in that in that episode. You'll just hear me now all throughout the Shining episode. Ah, oh, but in the book, <laughs> I'm going to be that guy now. Oh, the book, yeah. The book oh, now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so is there anything else you want to add before we wrap up? Um, no, I think I think we've pretty much talked about everything but the film really in this one it's like maybe <laughs> maybe the documentary is a better film than the film yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would that be your advice to people don't watch the film just watch the documentary or maybe watch the documentary then watch the film yeah. and then you might get more out of it yeah yeah you like it better yeah, <laughs> yeah possibly yeah i did <laughs> yeah <laughs> All right, cool. So if you've liked today's episode and want to hear more, then go ahead and give us a follow wherever you're listening from. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And you can vote on our monthly poll picks. And so, yeah, that's all for today. So thanks a lot for listening, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. <laughs>